So you'll see the behavior problems went down, instructional control went down, defective mans went down. I mean, there's still some challenge, and, and truth be told, we still have some work to do. But uh, we've, we've really felt very grateful for the opportunity to be able to control the variables and obviously maintain safety. So what I'm going to be talking about briefly is uh, a learner that we incorporated into our COVID compliant clinic. And he was actually our first learner in there since the pandemic began. And we began with him around April. Uh, the purpose of bringing him into the clinic is our data showed that once he was receiving remote instruction in the home, his challenging behavior increased tremendously. And it, and it was to no fault of anybody's other than the structure is substantially different when you go from having school all day and structured activities to going home and having a lot more flexibility with what you can do and things you can play with, things of that nature. So his behavior increased and we were fortunate enough to have the clinic space, have the staff availability. So we brought him into the clinic after Mike spent a lot of, Mike and Matt spent a lot of time putting together our integrity checklist and screening tools so that uh, all of our staff could really comply with the safety measures and provide this essential service. So our learner is JS and he's five years old with an autism spectrum disorder. And had challenging behaviors that we observed from JS included some highly intense tantrum-like behavior that oftentimes lasted up upwards of 20 minutes at a time. The tantrum-like behavior would often include aggressive behavior, sometimes self-injurious behavior, and then oftentimes it would also include elopement. Um, the other thing that we observed with this learner is that he also engaged in stereotypic behavior. So he would uh, hit his chest or hit his head, things of that nature. The function of his challenging behavior was to escape. So you can imagine when a learner goes from school and structure in a very predictable environment and going home, the contingency is so much different. And the other thing that's important to point out is that this learner had a lot of uh, skill limitations at the time that he came to us. So he had, although he had a vast capability to produce words, the words he produced weren't generally functional for him. So he could request for basic items, but when it came to specifically how he wanted to do something, he wasn't requesting or what we commonly refer to as manding to another person. He wasn't asking questions about where things were. Uh, he wasn't politely asking to do something different or asking us to put items in a certain place. And mind you, this learner is a learner that displays a lot of obsessive and compulsive tendencies. So if you move an item he was using one inch to the right, that was a trigger for a problem behavior. And that problem behavior could escalate. And again, like I talked about, it could last upwards of 20 minutes. So he was lacking a lot of foundation skills to help him advocate for himself. Another skill limitation he had was joint attention, commenting to others, basic greetings to other people. So he wouldn't really incorporate other people in his play. And what we saw is he wasn't cooperating with others. So we might build a basic block tower or dr start drawing a picture. And if we asked him to participate or help us, he was not interested. And then as a result, he would engage in challenging behavior to escape that exchange and continue to engage in the preferred activity that he was engaging in. So again, our clinic or the opportunity to use our clinic was so greatly appreciated because we could provide him the opportunity to really control the environment, provide structure, and of course, being mindful of all the safety measures that we just talked about, um, using a mask, obviously, across all situations, trying to distance as much as possible. Now, granted, this learner is five years old and it's very challenging to uh, remain six feet away from a five-year-old learner. And that's a common concern that a lot of us will be seeing when we're out providing these services or these essential services to learners. Uh, 
Um, but we were able to achieve not only a high percentage of integrity to our, uh, our checklist, our COVID compliant checklist, but we were also able to achieve a lot of success with this learner. So let me show you some of the results. As much as I would have loved to have included graphs for all of his challenging behavior, I included the most compelling uh, reductions in the severe challenging behavior. So first and foremost, his tantrum-like behavior, because that's what we saw most frequently. So in 15-minute partial interval data, we saw in March, which was just when the pandemic began, he was engaging in 13% of intervals where there were uh, tantrum-like behaviors. Within two months, that behavior reduced by 50, at least, or approximately 50%. So it moved down to 7% of intervals. The average duration of that tantrum behavior, like I mentioned earlier in March, was approximately 19 minutes. And this is the most compelling from my perspective. In June, the average duration of tantrum behavior was one minute or 1.25 minutes, which really speaks volumes to the amazing work that our team has been able to provide. Um, Gabby Cooper, Gina Masco, Gabby Masciotti, I think I said her name correctly, uh, Maddie, DeCerber Maddie DeCerbo, uh, who else we had, Crystal, Joe Kondorsky. Uh, they've really all been, been putting in uh, such time and, and really so much energy into not only being uh, diligent with abiding by the, the uh, COVID compliant checklist and the screening tools that we have to complete every morning before we arrive in the clinic, cleaning all of the, uh, the items that we have in the clinic. And I'm sure Mike will be talking about those sorts of measures, but they've also been m more than 90% of the time um, having fidelity to this learner's behavior plan. So it's really been such a benefit to be able to provide this essential service. And, and I think that's the most compelling result is that duration really having decreased tremendously. Um, the aggressive behavior I noted up here too, out of 15 minute partial interval data, in April, that behavior was occurring 15% of partial interval data. And there was about a 33% decrease in June. So two months later, that behavior has been reduced and, and we're really grateful for the, the opportunities. Is there, uh, just asking, is there any one aspect of the independent variable you think that produced the most reduction or, you know, I know it's a hard thing to elucidate, but. No, I, I think that's a great question. I mean, obviously our plans are very inclusive of a lot of different strategies, but I think the combination given his behavior was escape motivated. Majority of his behavior was motivated to escape demands or uh, changes, if you will. Functional communication training, I would say, was was highly beneficial. When, when he first started, everything he resisted and, and protested. Uh, and since our staff have been so persistent with assessing his motivation and modeling language using echoic models, this learner has mastered, and you'll see in this slide, the, the acquired skills are tremendous. He, he mastered 12 targets from level two and level three of the BB map. And, and for those of you who are familiar with those levels, they take, they're really much more abstract skills and they take a longer time to acquire. And the fact that he mastered two mans for negation is really remarkable because now he has the words to say, I don't wanna do that, or can I have more time? And it's, it's just amazing how he's not only uh, not tantruming, but he's engaging with us. He's looking at us. He's requesting with a variety of mans. He's asking us questions. He's so happy. And it's remarkable the, the amount of progress that he's made in the two months. I, I noted some of the targets that he's mastered in this slide. He, he, he tacks or labels things when we're asking him to find some really um, sophisticated, or what, when we're giving him more sophisticated questions about features and functions and categories, he's not only selecting when there's uh, a very distracting array in his natural environment, 
He's talking about it with us. He's asking us questions right afterward. He's sharing and letting us participate in his play, which is remarkable because like I said, two months ago, we couldn't even touch an item that he had and, and wanted to control. So it's so, really been a so blessing. So it's interesting. So he started getting a little more control over his environment by um, being able to delay how or, or extend a break or, or, or different things that he could control it sounds like through mm -hmm. functional equivalence, did he, and, and more and more that he would ask uh, for things and engage with you, do you think, I mean, I know that's not like a function control, but just the fact that he could strengthen, you strengthen all of his communicative requests, do you think somehow, obviously that, that was what reduced the tantrums, was that one of the most, the primary um, uh, results of that? of that FCT training? I, th I mean, well, I think, I that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I think, I think that the only thing I didn't mention is we also used extinction. So okay. extinction yeah. following tantrum-like behavior, functional communication training, and then providing the escape, which is the function of problem behavior. So no longer providing escape contingent on problem behavior, yeah. providing escape contingent on the functional communication. That's awesome. So in the very beginning, did you have to ride out like major bursts where he would um, dart all over and try to get out of the task? So that's interesting <laughs> like, you that, say that, that's Brett. Right on my uh, agenda. So this example or this visual that I provided is a score sheet for the VB map barriers, and the VB map barriers looks at barriers to skill acquisition, and a lot of times kids will have a plethora of skills in their repertoire but they're not displaying them because they have a, a ample barriers, whether it be behavior problems, instructional control, uh, whether there's um, the response requirement weakens their MO. There's these, the VB map is just really fabulous and I, I really am so grateful to have it as a tool because these barriers really make it so apparent of what we have to prioritize first and foremost. So you'll see here in the gray is, uh, that was in December when this learner was, uh, his assessment was completed in December. So the gray depicts the barriers. There were barriers in behavior problems, instructional control, defective mans, defective intraverbals, defective social skills, defective conditional discrimination skills. So that's when you'd show him something and you might say what color and he labeled the item. He wasn't following the direction or answering the question. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't able to generalize. Uh, the response requirement weakened his MO. He engaged in self-simulation. Obsessive compulsive behavior was really high. Hyperactive behavior and failure to maintain eye contact. So you'll see those in the gray was December. In blue, which is what you were just talking about, was there an, an extinction burst when he yeah. started? So blue was March. So if you think about March, I believe the uh, pandemic or the closure of school started around St. Patrick's Day. So March 17th. So you'll see, I think it was, I have the date there as uh, March 1st, because I think my computer just auto-corrected and formatted, but it was actually March 21st that we updated this assessment. And you'll see, when we completed the barriers in March, that some levels like behavior problems, instructional control, defective social skills, self-stimulation, those were actually higher barriers. And that might be due to whether it's the behavioral contrast from school to home, or just complete different structure and a change, and that's really hard for some of our kids, right? So I thought that was pretty compelling, showing that from December to March it went up. And then in, uh, in June, when we just updated it, you'll see that the barriers really went down. And as a result of that, he acquired a, uh, several more skills. So you'll see the behavior problems went down, instructional control went down, defective mans went down. I mean, there's still some challenge. And, and truth be told, we still have some work to do. But uh, we've, we've really felt very grateful for the opportunity to be able to control the variables and obviously maintain safety. So it, is it, <clears throat> was the setting allowing, was the setting, I guess, the, allowing for a, a lot of control of variables and um, do you see, foresee difficulty in the generalization when 
when he goes to other sites as a result of trying to control the var more uncontrollable variables? I don't know. No, that's a really good question. We're fortunate when we started, it was challenging because we had five clinical associates. So with the help of our amazing team, we really, we've been using video modeling, we've been using integrity checklists to make sure everyone's on the same page and doing things consistently. But the beauty of having so many staff, as, as much work as it is, is that it trains loosely and it, and it teaches him to generalize from the start. So that's incredible. So the multiple staff allow for generalization to occur as opposed to one clinician that he would just um, attend to and that so that did you systematically do that or did it kind of happen like it kind of happened at once we needed to get him into a program and get something started at once mm -hmm. um, but I must say that you know our integrity sheets from day one weren't a thing like I had them written in pencil and it was like okay you did this 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 and this this looked yeah. really great let's work on this that's good well it's it's really great because that's one of the biggest challenges for schools and parents is like one clinician gets total stimulus control and they don't generalize it because everyone's so happy and everyone's begging for that one one-to-one, -one, that one clinician because they implement things with such integrity. And I love that you were able to generalize it to multiple clinicians. So now, as long as you keep um, varying people in and they implement with integrity, you're, you're really strengthening those appropriate behaviors across many people. I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's one of the biggest challenges of behavior analysis, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, totally, especially when it comes to going from school to home. Yeah, exactly, yeah, because everything changes. Mm -hmm. and you're, you may have accidentally had multiple staff, but you responded well to it by systematically introducing those people so that he responds to all of them. That's incredible. That's one of the hardest things to do. Mm -hmm.